Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And today I am joined with Ashley Baker. You are a freelance illustrator. You host uh, a number of your pieces on you have your own personal Instagram as well as your own website. Uh, Ashley, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, so what I usually like to lead in with is I know that I gave you a very basic introduction, but I guess, uh, if you kind of want to expand on that in your word, in your own words and explain what you do and what motivates the content that you create. Yeah. So, I mean, basically I'm just a freelance illustrator. I work very graphic. I like, um, a lot of heavy line work, a lot of texture. Uh, I like to play around with color. Um, yeah, you pretty much hit the nail on the head, though. Okay. Um, I don't want to bury the lead uh, too much, but uh, I, I know that um, that you you did study um, art formally in college, and I, I guess I just want to get a general sense of um, what was that like for you, studying, like, studying art formally in, in that type of setting? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was a lot of um, it was interesting. You know, uh, I actually when I went to college, I didn't start off actually um, with illustration. I actually started off uh, with 3D animation and just found that it was a little too technical for me. Wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I swapped over to illustration with a concentration in concept design for animation and video games. So that's like uh designing characters, creatures, environments, props, vehicles, all sorts of things that you can think of. And my emphasis was uh, creatures. I really liked designing creatures. I liked horror, creepy things, things of that nature. Um, and then came to my senior year and completely scrapped all of that. It was, it was great. Uh, <laughs> uh, I worked mostly 3D, which is completely different from my style now um very rendered very i guess you could say painterly more like airbrushy but um just kind of fell out of love with that as well and then started looking um more into or getting really into like music and things of that nature and started designing music posters as a hobby and for my projects my senior year and started working in a more graphic style and uh i really really enjoyed that so swapped over to that and i've been doing that ever since um as far as college goes i i really enjoyed it i think it was beneficial to me i think it's cool that i've got like a degree and you know doing the thing that i love uh, but most importantly i think what was really beneficial about college was the connections I made and being in an environment around other artists and learning from them and talking to them and just hearing, you know, their stories and things of that nature. Now I know with like art, because I've talked to a few other artists and there's kind of a blend of some people with the route that you did and studied formally in, um, like studied, you know, in college to develop their skills while others, just decided to kind of go at it their own starting as like hobbyists doing it but then over time developing like their own following so is there any aspect of like studying art in college that you regret um it was really expensive <laughs> um i i don't i don't really know like i don't want to say that i regret it at all like i don't i don't think i have any regrets um like I said, I think it was a great experience. Uh, you know, my professors were super awesome. I had a professor that I think sold a painting to like Pete Wentz from Fallout Boy. Um, I've had professors that worked on uh, big um, animations. Like I had one professor who worked on the Iron Giant. Um, I mean, it's I, I don't have any regrets at all now. Uh, just meeting people was so great and learning from people. Um, I, I don't know. I guess uh, you briefly touched on, you said that part of your, like, your inspiration is that you go into, like, um, kind of horror themes. I, I'm looking at some of your designs here, and I noticed that uh, you also kind of take inspiration from, like, um, 
you know, kind of mock poster designs too. So Absolutely. I guess, um, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, um, why did you go in that direction for some of your pieces? Oh, well, you know, um, it started off in a kind of like a businessy class, you know, uh, we did a lot of case studies and things of that nature. And I found that with music posters, a lot of artists were just given the creative freedom to do whatever they wanted, you know? Um, you know, smack some words on it, some info, and it's a music poster. And so I really liked having that freedom of just kind of doing whatever I wanted, kind of relating it to the music uh, or the event, whatever. Um, and just, you know, being able to, like, have something that's more representative of me and the things that I like. I think that's what drew me to music posters at that time. Right, because like to me, I mean, I I don't really know because I don't keep up with like I'm I'm not like the biggest music guy, but I know like you know, way back in the day, like music posters, meh, sorry, music posters <laughs> like promoting venues or what have you, were like kind of like a really big thing. I think like more in like the '90s or so, but For now sure. as we kind of switch to more of a digital age, there's been kind of a transition into taking that style. And, you know, applying to, like, social media posts. Not to say that there yes. aren't, like, um, you know, music posters that still advertise venues or shows like that today. But, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I don't know if they are as prevalent. I mean, do, do you have any, like, um, any more history with that uh, for yourself, like, uh, or know anything about that? Um, not exactly. It's all relatively new to me, you know. Um. I just pretty much developed this style about, uh, gosh, how old am I? 23. Uh, probably like a year or two ago. Like I said, this was all in my senior year of college. I was just discovering new things about myself and about the work that I was doing um, and where I wanted to go. Uh, I found a lot of great artists that I cannot remember the names of right now, but um, uh as far as the history goes, I'm not that versed on it, which kind of makes me sound like a poser, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's that's fine. I, I was just curious, uh, like myself, because, um, you know, like that, like music posters, I remember are like very iconic. I think like the ones that I always remember are like the Metallica ones from way back oh, yeah. in the day. Um, but outside of that, like, again, I don't have much history with it either because I'm not a big right, music yeah. guy. Um, I guess what I'm always kind of curious sometimes with artists too is that, you know, like the actual process of like creating art. So I, I guess hypothetically, could you walk us through like your approach to how you start a piece to like finish? <laughs> oh, that's a funny question because it changes every time. It's never, it's never exactly the same, but you know, um, I work entirely digitally. Um, and so it starts off a lot with uh, looking at inspiration, you know, creating mood boards, um, just figuring out like where I want to go with the, with a piece. And then from there, you'll go into what's called thumbnails, which are really tiny sketches, kind of like little ideas um, regarding, you know, what this piece should be, um, where things should be placed within the piece, um, things of that nature. And I, like to switch between my programs as I'm working. So sometimes I want to work on my computer. Adobe Photoshop is what I'll use on the computer. And then I'll swap over to my iPad. Um, uh, so, well, let me backtrack. With Photoshop, I like to do my sketches um, just to be a little bit more loose with it. And then I feel more comfortable and like steady with Procreate just because that's what I started on. And Procreate is the app on your iPad that you can use. Uh, for digital art and so I feel like I said I feel more steady-handed and then um, you know I work with a lot of line art so that's when I'll go into Procreate and I'll do my lining uh, once the sketch is complete and then from there I'll just swap back and forth to in the color and you know um, that's the that's the easy part once the line art's done it's just you know putting in color because I like to work really detailed with my line art I love black line art um, creating shadows with etchy lines, things of that nature. Um, so yeah, it's a, like I said, it changes every time, just depending on the work. 
one thing that I, I that I also kind of find interesting is, um, you know, I, I I notice this sometimes on like uh, you know social media in general. But like you know, pe- artists will like post about their work, and you'll get like these weird distinctions where some artists will say like, "Oh, look at a sketch I'm doing," and it and it seems like a fully done piece, and then you know, <laughs> other people will like say like, "So, so I, I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask you is like, how do you make that distinction with your own work? Like, when do you determine when you're essentially done with a piece versus when something is just a work in progress?" Um, that's a really great question. I I suppose whenever I'm tired of it, I guess. Um, no. Uh, well, that probably seems like the most honest answer. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I don't really know. It's just like whenever you, for me, I guess, whenever I feel like it's done, then it's done. You know, if I feel like I've like marked all the boxes that I want with this piece, then I can call it done. Um, but like I said, it, it changes every time. Sometimes it's easier. Sometimes you're just not quite happy with it. Um, so it really depends. But for me, usually it's just like when I think that like the color and the line art are cohesive. If that makes sense, um, that's when I'll quit. And just make sure I have everything, all my boxes checked. Are there any pieces that you're looking at returning to in the future? that you've done currently? Uh, let's see. Um, I, have a, I have a drawing of a possum. And it's screaming, and it's got its little fists clenched, and it says, I have a bad day. That's what the, that's what the poster says. And um, I think that I could definitely like rework the possum's body a little bit. I feel like its head's a little too small for its body, and it's got really tiny teeth. Uh, <laughs> um, I would probably work on, like I said, the line art a little bit more there. I think most of my piece, like most of my um, work process is spent on my line art. Uh, so I'd probably kind of sketch that out again and rework the body. Maybe add a little bit more detail. Now, I know as artists go into their career, they sometimes do like kind of, you know, they start with one, one special, uh, sorry, one speciality, but over time, they kind of venture into like, you know, other forms of artistic expression or what have you. Is, is there anything else that you're curious to branch out of outside of like what you do now? Yes, absolutely. Um, so... A very common theme that you can see in my work is that I draw a lot of animals and a lot of skulls. And it's because I love to do that, don't get me wrong, but I feel like there's more potential and I want to kind of get a little bit better with um, really like, I guess you could say architecture and um, what's the word, perspective and kind of like branch out a little bit more, do that, do more environments, because a lot of my work is, you know, uh, I guess one subject and not really any like background or environment or space that it's in. So I want to branch out more and do more of that because I used to do it and I stopped. So I'd like to have more of that in my portfolio. If you don't mind me asking, why did you uh, like stop doing like environmental artwork? Um. So I did a lot of environments when I was still doing concept design and I hated it because I had to do it. (laughs) Um, You know, I was when I was in college. Um, And I think, you know, like. Coming back to it, like not as a student and doing it like on my own time with no deadlines, I think um, it'll allow me to be more creative and put more of myself into it, more effort into it. And I have a lot of great ideas. I'm working on one piece right now. Uh, and I think that it would just be more fun to explore at this time, if that makes sense. No, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, kind of going back to your experience in college, um, you know, if there's any of my listeners uh, who, who are listening to this episode right now and are like kind of interested in 
pursuing an art career themselves and are hoping to study art, you know, in a collegiate setting, uh, what advice would you give to them? Or I guess you could also phrase it like, if you could go back in time and talk to yourself, like what advice would you give to yourself about like going to, uh, you know, college for art? Okay. So your first year, you're probably not going to like, um, I feel like my first year, like as a freshman was probably the most challenging year for me because it's, you're not in the classes that you want to be in yet. You know, you're doing your foundation classes. So you're doing like foundation drawing. Um, everyone's at different skill levels. Um, some people are really, really good. Some are really not good. Um, and then also you're taking your like your uh, your foundation like uh, lecture classes. You still have to take lecture classes in art school, unfortunately. I took math. I hated it. Um, and it's it's just not what you want, and it ca it's kind of uh, underwhelming. And I don't know how to explain it. It's difficult. Um, but once you get into your major classes, I suppose starting your next year, it gets a lot more fun. You're doing the things that you want to do, and so I just I, I would say like keep pushing. That first year sucks, but after that, it's all fun, you know. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I guess uh, I guess going back a little bit further for yourself, like before studying art in college, like how much of um, like. Like growing up, did you always see yourself as wanting to be an artist or did you have other kind of aspirations in mind? <laughs> well, you know, um, I always did like to draw and create, but I don't really think that I thought about pursuing it as a career until I was probably 13, 14-ish, which I guess is still pretty young. But um you know, before that, I wanted to be like a veterinarian or something like that, <laughs> which is funny considering how many animals I draw now. But yeah, I had, I had normal ideas when I was younger, but for most of my life, I guess you could say I've wanted to pursue a career in art. So um, if you don't mind me asking, like, what do, you, what do you think was the switch for you then from like going like deciding like oh okay now i want to like i actually do want to study art um that's a really good question i guess just finding out that like art school was a thing <laughs> you know um i the school that i went to i went to savannah college of art and design in savannah georgia and um i i think i was probably 15 i went to like a week-long seminar there and I fell in love with the town. I fell in love with, you know, just being around people who worked like me and thought like me. And um, I think from that point is when I knew for sure that, like, this is where I want to go. This is what I want to do, you know? Um, yeah. Um, I guess uh, because I don't know how, I mean... I, I, I'm kind of just still experimenting with this, like, like with this question in general, mm -hmm. but, um, I don't know how many of your fans are necessarily going to listen to this like, <laughs> episode, um, mm -hmm. only because, you know, I get it. Not everyone has the time to like, listen to, uh, you know, hour long podcast episodes, by the way, I always forget to ask, uh, how long do you have, um, with me before I continue? Um, like availability or yeah yeah like uh can you stay for the full hour or oh uh, yeah i'm i'm free yeah don't worry i'm a freelance artist i have nothing but time <laughs> okay i just want to make <laughs> sure you know um, yeah but yeah like i said i don't know how many of your fans are necessarily gonna listen to this episode um mm -hmm. but i guess i want to kind of take the opportunity here to ask you uh do you have any like art hot takes like you know anything that you know i think uh, <laughs> the larger art community or like your uh, fellow colleagues might disagree with that you you know firmly believe in oh man i 
I don't know if this is a hot take because I feel like most artists agree with me. Like, I really hate AI. I really hate AI art. I can't think of anything else that would yeah, be like that's, hot. That's kind you of know? a mild take, to be honest. Right, right. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. Um, that is really all that I can think of. I know that it's like um, very split in the community. Some people can get with it. Some like me absolutely cannot. But um, I guess that's really the only thing I can think of right now. God, I've talked about AI so much on this show. I don't know if really? I want to like <laughs> yeah, keep we don't have talking to, about no. it. Let's I, not. Let's not go. But if I get started, I won't stop. So let's let's go to something else well, for okay. sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask. I guess one question. Then I um, is AI something that you're worried about as you pursue a career in art? Um. Yes and no. I think that where time is like an issue i think that it is concerning you know like how like how fast that ai can produce work i think it's um i don't know the word that i'm thinking of i don't know the word i think it's threatening you know to people like me to illustrators who you know take time on their work but as far as having character and putting humanity and life into a piece, I think that illustrators obviously win that one compared to AI. So I think it's definitely split. It really depends on the situation. Yeah, I mean, my general, uh, and I've, and to any old listeners, I apologize for bringing this up again, but you know. <laughs> my fault. It, it, it's always good to, I guess, to talk about, but like for myself, the way that I see it is I think a lot of commercial art is going to be very much dominated by like, you know, AI created pieces. But I think there mm -hmm. will always kind of be a market for like human made art simply because art is like beyond like its commercial value. It is, you know, very much, you know, it has like communicative value to it, right? Like it is a form sure. of like communication between people and i think that will always be valuable i always kind of i know it's not one-to-one -one, but i always kind of um compare it to like in music when they started introducing like oh you can replicate the sound of a guitar through your computer right right and that didn't necessarily get rid of like you know guitar players because i think you know for you know there's still there was still an interest in like learning to play guitar like that absolutely so that's like my my general sense of it i don't know if uh, you have anything to add to that yeah for sure and i think that um i don't know if these are entirely i wouldn't call them entirely similar instances but i do know that there was backlash even when digital art became a thing you know like uh, saying that it's not real and even still people have that take that digital art isn't real art um so i think it's definitely so i don't think it's going anywhere i think it's here to stay at least for the time being um but, but I, I don't i don't know i, I <laughs> i'm not a fan um yeah yeah all all, all the homies hate AI <laughs> all the homies hate it yeah for sure sorry for bringing that up again <laughs> no it's it's fine it's fine it's you know um i most of my viewers are like not like necessarily returning viewers so i think it's always good to like you know kind of nail down these points every so every now and then um sure. but you don't have any other art hot takes like nothing like that do you I, I, okay, let me, I guess, rephrase it. Are there any artists, like, working, like, any big-name artists that you can think of working right now that you think are overrated? Oh, man. Uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't think of any. Okay, okay, fair, fair. You All don't right. want to, like, you know, burn Maybe any I bridges. Don't... I understand. I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I mean... <laughs> um. Uh, I don't know. So I guess uh, right now you're working as, you know, obviously kind of a freelancer. I imagine you take commissions where you can, you know, um, 
you practice with like your own pieces to hone your craft but i guess like in the future like where do you see i hate ants i hate asking this question because <laughs> it's always like such a job interview question well like where do you see yourself in 10 years but i oh, guess man. where do you see your career kind of progressing in the future okay i love this question because i'm so excited to like get the ball rolling on this um but i would love to um in the future just have my own business um like a printing business uh uh with my own line design my own t-shirts uh knickknacks other things i'd love to get into 3d modeling and sell models of my work um but also i'd love to just be like the middleman you know people come to me with their designs i'll print them for them uh all sorts of things um mostly printing having my own things to sell things of that nature i guess it's kind of boring <laughs> but it, that's that's my dream no that's very cool that's very um unique like so are are there any like printing services that you that you've been looking into that you would use because for a while like i did uh podcast merch and i used uh mm -hmm. i had like a teespring store up it's it's been closed right now just because uh mm -hmm. i don't know thinking about restructuring how i approach like monetization if i want to approach monetization mm -hmm. um but yeah have you looked into any services like that for yourself or is it something that you want to like pursue outside of like a third party i want to pursue outside of a third party and maybe someday become a third party i don't know <laughs> but i would love to get into um screen printing and things of that nature uh, really just do it all on my own Maybe someday I'll have employees, maybe. But yeah, I really just kind of want to do it all myself. Okay. Yeah, no, that seems that seems very interesting like because I know um because I imagine most artists want to like in general stay in like a digital space and they don't really see like you know um pursuing like making their art into like through something like physical like printing or what have you. I mean, I guess some kind of do. But, you know, um, for a lot of them, it's first and foremost about building their audience in, like, a digital space and then expanding out into, like, doing, like, physical merch or what have you. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I love what I do, you know. And I, you know, when I put my work into a physical space, I want it to be the same quality throughout the entire process. And... Not, you know, bashing on third parties online or anything, but um, I feel like <laughs> in a weird way, like if I can do it myself, then I know like I can like ensure how the quality is going to be, you know, um, obviously it's not going to be the best right off the bat while I'm learning, but it's what the learning process is for, you know, and I just want to yeah. see it through to the end. Um. So I think a little while ago you briefly mentioned like some of the like tools, like some of the software and tools that you use. Um, mm -hmm. And again, like sometimes I try and broach these questions. Like if I have a hypothetical, you know, newcomer to like, you know, wanting to develop their skills as an artist listening to them, um, what would they want to hear from the people that I talk to? And so I guess for yourself, like what, what are some general like online tools that you would recommend most artists, uh, most newcomer artists understand how to use? Okay, yeah, I would, um, if we're talking in regards to like digital art, um, I mean, it's, it's expensive, but it's very helpful to have like a tablet, you know, whether that be an iPad or a tablet that you can connect to your computer. Um, I always, when I started off, I had my iPad. Um, which I recommend if you're learning uh, digital art for the first time. There is an app, it's called Procreate. It is $10 and you pay it once, or at least it was $10 when I bought it back in like 2020. Um, I highly recommend it. It's very user-friendly and it is the closest thing to industry standard you can get on the iPad, in my opinion. Um, it's and there, I mean, there's tons of tutorials online about it. And like I said, it's user friendly. You can learn it relatively quickly. Um, as far as computers go, I mean, there's Photoshop. Photoshop's a little more difficult to learn, but that one is the industry standard. 
Um, those are basic. Those are pretty much my only tools. If I'm doing like logos or anything like that, I'll use Adobe Illustrator, which is an entirely different ball game. But yeah, that's kind of like the tools that I use. I know there's like a lot of um, kind of controversy with Photoshop, like for myself, for example, <laughs> um, when I, you know, recently I've been getting into actually kind of making my own thumbnails for uh, episodes. And when mm -hmm. looking at the technology, I, I decided to go with GIMP because I know like people have had like, in some cases, like a better experience with GIMP mm -hmm. and especially with Photoshop recently, there's been issues regarding like, um, potentially them like yeah i mean you were mentioning ai earlier but that they're supposedly <laughs> like trying to I, yeah. I i can't remember like the full context of the controversy but it's like they were scraping like kind of data from work that you do in photoshop to like kind of feed into like you know ai algorithms like that is, is that like i guess is that a concern for you like using something like photoshop and do you have any considerations for any um you know any other alternatives to that? You know, I have heard about that, and that is a concern for me. But also, I just have not done much research on it, actually. Um, I did hear that they, uh, there was like a statement that they had released or something about them backtracking on that after receiving backlash. But like I said, I am not fully uh, educated on the, on the situation. Um, but definitely, like, I am totally fine with just going back to Procreate. <laughs> I love Procreate. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I just thought it was, like, a an interesting point to, um, bring up. Absolutely. Um, but for yourself, though, in terms of, like, how you refined your style, is there any, like, kind of artist that kind of, like, inspired you as you um, started to, like, hone your craft over the years? You know, I wish I could remember names better, but <laughs> a lot of the, uh, the stuff that I find is just, you know, um, what people post on Pinterest. I, I swear by Pinterest. I love it. Um... Uh, but yeah, a lot of my inspiration would just come from the mood boards that I would make on Pinterest. Just a conglomeration of all sorts of artists. You know, yeah. just looking. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm really big on Pinterest like you are, though, <laughs> personally. I mean, I, I've heard it's like a good resource, but I never like really, like I've never been interested in like making an account on there. That's very fair. Um, Especially since I I think from what I've heard, it could be sometimes hard to like if you find an image on Pinterest, it could be hard to like nail down like the sword, the original source mm -hmm. of that um, image in the way that you can on like other social media sites. Um, I don't know. Have you have you had any problems with that? Um, I do know that a lot of people will definitely like repost stuff on Pinterest, but um, not. Really, I suppose. I guess I just don't really pay enough attention. Okay, no, that, that that's fair. I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just curious because I, don't, I don't know. Like again, I don't really use Pinterest myself. Like maybe aspects of it have gone better with time. I, I've just kind of been turned off myself by like the, um, by the UI of it. Yeah, totally. Um, so I guess I know I asked you like okay in terms of like the long term what are your goals with like your career and like your art but i guess in the more immediate sense do you have any uh projects on the horizon um it's funny you ask that um because i've actually started working on a little sketch to advertise this episode on my oh, social well, media thank you. <laughs> absolutely um so that's like my current right now project um as far as anything else goes, I mean, like, just keep working on a few commissions. I'm working on a really cool tattoo design right now. Um, and then other than that, I've got a lot. I've got like six or seven personal projects that are just sitting there waiting to be worked on right now. So a lot on my plate, but I enjoy it. So does it really work? Um, 
I know for a lot of artists as like sometimes kind of a means to like supplement like their own income between work and what have you. Uh, they sometimes like stream themselves like creating art, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, try and get like donations through that or, you know, just just in general, get into streaming. Is that something that you've ever been interested in? Oh, yes. Um offline we had the conversation about you know the new mic that i got um which is partly because i do intend on starting streaming my process mostly to hold myself accountable and like actually get things done just because i tend to get distracted often <laughs> so um i think it would be awesome to start streaming um yeah it's definitely something i've considered um so if if you were to stream, do you think you would do like the whole setup with like uh, a face cam, or do you think you would? Uh, because I know like uh, I've been experimenting with myself using like you know kind of a I have like what they call like a PNG tour or like just a general av avatar to represent like yourself. Like what what approach mm -hmm. do you think you you would take with that? Yeah, I'm totally down for face cam. Um, I really haven't thought too far about it, um, but yeah, that's. Definitely something I would consider as long as, you know, the face cam doesn't obstruct what I'm working on, you know, I'm sure I can make it work, but because the most important thing is what, you know, is being put on, I guess, quote, paper. Right, right. I got you. I, it's just, you know, I, I'm always curious about like, you know, uh, streaming in general. I thought about like getting into streaming myself, but, um. You know, not not for me at the moment because I think it's like mm -hmm. more of a time commitment for myself than I would totally like. But um, no, I I think that's amazing, and I I hopefully I look forward to watching your streams in the future. <laughs> Maybe so. I'll keep you updated. Um, but I guess so. A lot of this channel is, uh, or a lot of my program is talking about like media in general, and I tend to kind of have a focus on like film or television uh, lately I've been on a kick with like video games or what mm -hmm. have you but is there any um, type of I guess uh, media that you yourself are like drawn to that you think you pull a lot of <laughs> inspiration in regards to how you approach your own work because I know you've mentioned like um, um, well yeah I, I guess in general like yeah is there any media that you pull inspiration from Oh, yeah, I absolutely love video games. And, I, you know, I love music as well, but we've, you know, talked about that so much. I love video games. I have always been a gamer. You know, um, like I said, when I was in college, my concentration was, you know, uh, concept design for animation and video games. And mostly my work was um, intended for the use of like a video game or like a horror game. Um, so I definitely draw a lot of inspiration from games. Um, I actually made a concept for a video game that was based off of, uh, what is it called? Friday Night Funkin', uh, which is like a rhythm-based game. But as far as like games that I love that inspire me, we you've got like games like Red Dead Redemption, um, Fallout. I love Fallout. Um, oh yeah, just all sorts of different games right now i've been on a Fortnite kick which is kind of embarrassing to say but hopefully it's a little less embarrassing when i say that it's mostly festival that i've been playing <laughs> no i mean like uh yeah i mean a lot of people are into Fortnite. i know they've been doing like, <laughs> uh, they have like a new seasonal event or something where they're uh right like dr doom is going to be the main villain i don't know they, <laughs> they do so many announcements with Fortnite. i can't keep up with it myself right um, <laughs> But um, uh, no, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, it's it's also good to talk to another like Fallout fan, um, myself. Oh, Just yeah. curious, have you checked out the show? Yes, I loved it. I, I also. Are, are, am I allowed that. to like? Should I should I keep you know spoilers out of? <laughs> um, out of the... Yeah. Okay. Everyone, spoiler alert! If you don't want to get spoiled, skip like <laughs> two or three minutes ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the last episode. Um, what is, what was the guy's name? The, uh, the ghoul. I forget his name. 
they call him the ghoul no his character did have oh. a specific, <laughs> well, no they did they did they did give him a name like howard i think was his like his actual okay. name but like in the show they call him like the ghoul but yeah okay so what do you what do you think about like his last few lines you know like where he was like where's my wife and my kid <laughs> that just made i'm sorry i'll, I'll let you talk no i think i'm so um, excited no i am very <laughs> interested in it too it's um I guess, uh, oh God, I did like a whole episode talking about like, my <laughs> thoughts on um, Fallout. I'm um, so sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. I, I love talking about media. It's like why I why I do what I do. Um, one thing that I found kind of interesting about the show is that, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I kind of was hoping that the show as much as I do enjoy the show myself, I was kind of hoping that they would explore an area outside of like California because like yeah. in the games, it's like the main areas we've explored is like, you know, I think like if, if I'm remembering correctly, like Washington with fallout three, mm -hmm. uh, new Vegas is obviously the Mojave and you know, like mm -hmm. the kind of Las Vegas area. And then four, I think was like, or, I can't remember Boston, it was like four it? like the original games like called, followed in California, but now in the show we're back in California. And I don't know. I kind of wanted them to do more like Louisiana or like the Swampland. Oh. I thought it would have been more interesting for the show. I mean, I get why they did like California, I guess, because it is very it is like kind of iconic to the series. Um That would be neat, yeah. Yeah. Or like even Alaska I thought would have been interesting because I know oh. um uh from uh I, I think they did like interviews and they talked about how like uh fallout they want to see as very much like an american type series because you know uh interlaid mm -hmm. in the themes of fallout and i guess it's kind of iconography is like this examination of like americana right of like american culture right right and so mm -hmm. obviously they don't i don't think they really want to set a fallout game outside of like america for that reason but um mm -hmm. No, no. So I I'm sorry like, if, I, if I was if I was no. rambling. I didn't really answer your question. I'm enjoying. Um, but no, I think, um, like I said, I I loved his arc. I think it was. Um, uh, I, I I guess I am really curious where they kind of go with it. I, I, for my audience or for any new listeners, if you want to listen to my thoughts in full, I've done like a an episode talking about like why I think the Fallout adaptation like works and stuff i can't remember the title of the episode like i think it was like sheltering myself with like some fallout the series takes give that a listen if you want more of my thoughts but um yeah again i'm sorry i didn't want to take too much of uh, <laughs> your interview time talking about the fallout show but go ahead no it's great um i feel like you know like that last part of the episode maybe it's just kind of like I don't know how to explain it. Like, it just reminds me of like the first scene in Fallout 4, you know, where, um, or not the first scene, but a, a little at the beginning of the, of the game where you're like, well, I mean, I guess where the wife or the, the husband is killed and the kid is taken. And it, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of like the vibe that it's given off for the next season. You know, well, maybe yeah. it's like, yeah, I, I, because I think that was like the point of the goal is to like for him, he kind of gives us that perspective of like life before the bombs fell, right? Um, and so I guess being making him kind of the goal, we see like someone kind of living through that perspective, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that's what makes him very compelling because our. Or I guess even like with the entire cast, because with each member of the cast, again, I, I said this in the episode, that um you get like different perspectives. Like you get the perspective of someone who grew up in the vault. You get the perspective of somebody who grew up trying to rise in the ranks of like the Brotherhood of Steel. And then obviously you get the, like the ghoul mm -hmm. who um, has the perspective of not only like kind of a wastelander, but somebody who's you know, again, like lived before the bombs. And I think like that's an interesting interplay between those three characters and like the intersection of like their lives in this story. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, I keep bringing it up. No, no, it's fine. I, I'm also very, very excited that um, <laughs> I, again, even though we're gonna go back into you know New Vegas, like um, mm -hmm. 
I, I, again, I, I, I get why they're wanting to do it because like, especially Fallout New Vegas is like very popular. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm also very excited. I'm very curious to see where they continue with, uh, the series. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, let me think what else did I want to ask? <laughs> oh, um, so I guess, how do you, so when you approach like your art, um, how do you price out your commissions? I guess if, if anybody listening to this would want to hypothetically like get work done from you, and because I think from my understanding, you are accepting commissions right now at the moment, right? That's right. Okay, so for yourself, how do you like kind of, because I think this is always kind of a difficult thing that some newer artists have in that, um, you know, they, when they're first starting out, they're trying to gauge like, okay, what is like the value of my work to other people? And accordingly, how do I like price out like, you know, kind of, I guess, licensing my own work to other people and you get like, you know, I think newer artists feel more compelled to like undervalue their work as a means of just getting jobs in general. So how do you kind of approach that problem for yourself? You know, it's, it's really tricky. Um, a lot of artists like to work with like a set rate. Um, I do not, I feel like everything, like, I don't know if I can fairly price something with a rate with a rate. So I really just kind of like, you know, take the prompt, take what, take whatever they're, they're telling me that they want. And I just kind of like estimate, you know, like how much effort am I going to put into this? Um, because all of my work, it all takes different times, just depending on this, to be frank, is just if I want to do it. <laughs> um, and how much effort, you know, it requires to put into it. So really it's just, you know, like I'll stick with a base price. Um, and then just depending on what the client wants, I'll kind of like hone in on a more accurate price, if that makes sense. What it's, are... a little, it's a little odd, <laughs> an odd way to go about things. No, no, I mean, it's, it's very kind of have to like, you know, broach it as you go. I get that, especially since like I know uh, client jobs can change, especially like with time as, in, you know, as the, clients um kind of get more of a sense of like what they want from a project i, I get that yeah for sure um i guess for like obviously you love doing what you do you love art you love illustration but are there any aspects of like creating pieces or anything like that that you like despise that you just kind of dredge through ah uh, oh man i guess you know certain themes i'll say um i don't know if i want to say what the themes are in case i have any clients who are listening in <laughs> but um definitely just like i guess themes that i'm not as interested in if that makes sense you know like i like horror themes i like uh you know doing the graphic work and like stylizing my work things of that nature. So um, I guess themes that don't necessarily align with the stuff that I'm interested in. Sometimes it it's a little harder for me to get started on those. Yeah. Yeah. So basically like doing work that, you know, you're not necessarily like have a personal connection to. Right. 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 Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Um. So I guess um, we are kind of well. No, I mean we still we still have a little bit of time. Um, but uh, I guess um, outside of art, I know you mentioned you like that you are a gamer that you do like to play video games. But are, are there any other hobbies that like interest you? Oh man, I've really gotten back into um, exercising and going for walks. I've really been enjoying like. Uh, just going out, like being outside, which is so funny because for the past like three weeks where I'm at, it has just been nothing but rain and just like, I mean, torrential downpour. So I've pretty much been stuck inside gaming and drawing, but 
I've really been enjoying going outside and, you know, just, you know, touching grass every now and then. It's always great to touch grass. That's what we <laughs> recommend. Absolutely. Um, are there any, I guess, uh, well, I guess I, I will say this, like, you know, are there any, like, friends from, like, college that you still, like, uh, like, keep up with that, like, you know, have kind of helped you in developing your career currently? Oh, yes. Um, my best friend who I lived with, like, or dormed with since freshman year, her name's Kira, I'm gonna shout her out. Um, she has been with me through everything and she actually had the same major same concentration as me um and she's been my rock she has supported me through everything and i hope i've been able to do the same for her uh yeah i mean best connection i made in college for sure mm, very nice very nice how, how has she helped you if you don't mind me asking like you know post your uh, post getting out of college <laughs> well, we actually, um, whenever we're working on something, we'll always make sure that we'll send what we're working on back and forth for um, what we call critique, you know, which is pretty self-explanatory. We tell each other like, hey, maybe you could uh, make this bigger or um, adjust this hand to make to look more like a hand, you know, um, things of that nature. So we help each other out in that way. Um, and other ways, I suppose, as well. Just not relating to art. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, well, we are around the fifty-minute mark, but uh, I think uh, I think I've uh, unfortunately kind of exhausted all the questions that I I had to ask of you at the moment. Um, for my listeners, thank you so much for uh, joining us today, uh, Ashley. If you want to go ahead and shout out where people can find you, where people can possibly even commission um, work from you. Absolutely. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, it's just Ashley Baker. Or you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Art by Ashley with two H's at the end instead of one. Um, yeah, so that's where you can find me. I appreciate you for having me on here today. It's been a really interesting and fun experience. I've never done anything like this before. So really neat. Well, thank you so much for um, joining us. And uh for my own listeners, I have been told that I have too many subscribers. So if you, some of you can unsubscribe for me, that'd be great. I need to be below 20. But uh, no, seriously, thank you all for joining us and uh, take care. <laughs>